So we are at the Hampton Inn, Seattle Airport. And uh, it's important to get that name exactly right because there is also a Hampton Inn and Suites uh, like 500 meters from here. So make sure you get the right hotel. In my first attempt, I did not. <laughs> so anyways, we are here. And so let's take a look at the room. We've got the standard evacuation plan on the back of the door here. We've got a uh, peephole thing here. Uh, so you can see who's coming to visit. Not sure what that's all about. Maybe there used to be a cover for it, I don't know. And we've got some security features here. This would, this, well, okay, it open. Hmm. That's weird. Oh, there we go. Now I got it. So this would obviously block the door if someone tried to gain entry physically. And you got the deadbolt here. Lock like that and unlock. And you've got a do not disturb sign, which not always consistent in hotels, so it's nice that this one has one. In our last day at Double Tree, someone tried to enter our room uh, shortly after midnight on a Saturday, even when we had our Do Not Disturb sign out, so those are critical. <laughs> All right, let's go take a look at the room. So we've got the mirror there, full length. We've got some cups and an ice bucket. That's actually pretty nice, I like that look. It's, a little, it's kind of plasticky, but it's a nice look. Uh, and so there's sort of a, um, a couple of ottomans, benches, uh, under that table there. A picture of the public market in Seattle, since we're in Seattle. And let's take a look. We've got the light and the nightstand. Let's go ahead and turn that on. And so we've got a USB port here and a standard plug here. It's one of the things about Hilton Properties. Hampton is owned by Hilton and Hilton believes in providing you plenty of power, which I appreciate. So this is a king room. So that's a king size bed there, which is substantial in size. That is fantastic. Almost feels like maybe a California king. I don't know. Not an expert in bed sizes. And we've got some more power over here just under the TV. We've got a USB port there and a couple of standard plugs. There's the remote for the TV, and here's the TV. TV is a Samsung, so that's a pretty good brand name. They didn't cheap out there. It's a decent size. Could be bigger, of course. There's certainly space for it, but that's okay, given how close we'll be to the TV. That's totally fine. And let's take a look here. Under the TV, we have a Summit fridge, which opens this way. Sort of a standard hotel-sized fridge. And we've got a microwave. There's the coffee maker and the coutrements that go with it so you can make coffee. And this is a little different, sort of a slide out basket sort of system for putting things. And of course, you've got a Bible likely placed by the Gideons. Got another light over here with some power on it. And on the other side of under the TV, one more USB charging port and two more plug-ins. So we will probably not be needing our Tron power cube, which we bring with us on every trip just in case, but don't think we need it this time. Garbage there. There's the air conditioning, getting, getting a little air out of it. Let's give that a listen because it is making some noise. That's not too bad. This is a slightly different layout than what we're used to, but it's all right. We've got another light here. Let's get some more light going. There's the phone and more bedside power, two plugs and one USB. And you've also got this little table thing that pulls out, which is nice. Uh, you can place some stuff on that. And we've got a chair with this cool little over the side, or it could be over the front if you moved it around. So if you were to eat or write something, that could be quite good. And over here we've got, I mean, this is unusual. It's just, what, oh, this is kind of like a closet. It's kind of like a closet alcove or a closet nook. And there's some things going on here. So we've got the iron, the ironing table. We've got the thing for your luggage there, which I often use. We get some extra blankets in case it happens to get cold. And you've got some hangers. And this is kind of weird. Look at the things that you'd be hanging on. I mean, that could work, especially if it's like a flat suit or something. Uh, that's interesting. I don't know what this is. Yeah, it seems to have some LED indicators on it. I have no idea what that does. <laughs> it doesn't seem to be a light or anything. Let's take a look over here. I hope I'm not like activating the bat signal or something. I have no idea what this is. Let me know in the comments. Do you have any clue what these things are? I have no idea. I, I, I couldn't even begin to speculate. We've got a couple of plugs, though, in the sort of 
closet alcove. And this is a corner room, which I thought might have massive view and windows. It actually has a small window here. I'm not too concerned. I don't generally stay in a property for the view. And that's, you can see out there is our view. Looks like we are, I think, just above the check-in lobby, which is interesting. Uh, what is further interesting is, even though we're right above the lobby, the elevator is way down a set of a hallway from the lobby, go up, and then you have to walk all the way back. So it is a bit of a walk to get to room 443 here at the Hampton Inn. We've got some more power over here. And that's the AC. Cool it off a little. I like it nice and cold. And so we've got the barn door here for the bathroom. We'll check that out in a second. Let's see how smooth that is. That is whisper quiet, which is nice. And of course there's the clock on the nightstand there. Let's go take a look at the bathroom. Normally our hotel reviews begin in the bathroom because normally you can reach the bathroom right away from the front door. We have stayed in a room somewhat like this when we were in Portland for Portland Archer Gaming Expo once before uh, with Mike and Julian. So. Uh, not entirely unfamiliar layout. So we've got our shower here. Shower head looks to be pretty good. I mean, there's some inconsistent coloration, but it actually looks clean. So I think that's fine. And we've got our control here. <laughs> that's a little sun that's etched in there and a snowflake over here. So even if you don't know the language, you can kind of parse what's hot and what's cold. And then you've got the little dish, the drain, the little corner and corner there for your soap and shampoo. And so you can just close it. You can close this a couple of different ways, but this is one of them. That's obviously the towel that you would put on the floor to keep the floor from getting wet when you're going in and out of the shower. And there's a bit of a vent over here, so that probably helps keep it from getting too humid. Inside the vent isn't fantastic, but you're not really gonna see that. Couple things to hold stuff on, hang stuff, clothes or dowels. And we've got some art and a pretty basic toilet. Uh, it looks like to be, I think, a relatively low flow back, but it does only have the simple handle rather than some places have those two buttons, one for solid, one for liquid. I prefer that, but this is still fine. Garbage, toilet paper, and in here we can find them. And pull out <laughs> the blow dryer here. So this is a Con Air blow dryer. And let's take a look at, we've got the towels. I find since COVID has struck the towels, uh, they're generally just enough for two people. Um, whereas previously, many hotels would have just tons of towels all over. There's the Kleenex and here, this is a little bit different. We've got the moisturizing body lotion, that's standard. The Neutrogena shampoo and conditioner, that is Hampton Inn standard. But two things that are different, this, Be Different, Be Fun, Fatigue Fighter Body Wash, that's different, I have to wonder. I'm not sure who makes this. Is this a Neutrogena product? It looks like it's from Germany, but made in Malaysia, ADA International. That's interesting. I am not familiar with that. And we have Eco Botanics Chamomile and Honey with Organic Olive Oil Moisturizing Body Bar. That's kind of cool. The company is EcoWell. That doesn't appear to be a Neutrogena product, but that's fine. Um, the soap that we normally get, the Neutrogena Bar Soap, uh, I, it's fine. It's not exciting. This I'm, I'm curious about. Check out, see how that is. And over here we got more Eco by Green Culture. This is the facial soap. And that's, you know, that's pretty small, but that is all you really need. And then we have a nightlight <laughs> and a plug. Let's check out the nightlight. Okay. I don't think that nightlight works. Let's uh, close the barn door here. It provides a little green dot. I don't think that nightlight is working. <laughs> and that is okay. We don't really need it. So there you have it. That is a quick tour of the room. If you found this video useful, please give it a like, thumbs up. We do appreciate it. Let's us know what kind of videos to make in the future. And uh, yeah, let me know, would you stay in a place like this? We got two nights for about $222. It was a relatively last minute booking. So probably not the best price we could have gotten, but we did okay. And so far it seems fairly reasonable. And let me know, what do you think this is? Is it lights? Is it a sensor? Is it? I have no idea. I just, I have no idea. What is it? Let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out our other travel videos. We give you hotel tours, tips on how to save money and how to travel cheaper and more often. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.